C.B. Sobolski and Marvel Comics are extremely desperate, woefully equipped to read their own customer base, or most likely equal parts of both. The announcement galvanized an increasingly divided comic book community in mockery and open scorn. This week's Marvel Comics releases contain teaser images featuring creators for an upcoming event in August 2019. Speculation began almost immediately, many believing they were associated with the upcoming Absolute Carnage event or Marvel's 80th anniversary celebration. In my own Comics Aficionados Collaborators discussion group, many of my cohorts were giddy with excitement. Everyone knew this was Marvel EIC, C.B. Sobolski's baby. Some thought he was finally getting free reign to manage Marvel Comics for a change. There was a chance Marvel was returning to its roots by bringing back a core of great creators, ushering in a renewed focus on quality and customer satisfaction. I was personally a bit out of the loop at the time. I couldn't keep up with the details, but I saw a lot of buzz on social media. But I was highly skeptical Marvel would drop their SJW focus and course correct their comics lineup. In the end, my cynicism was proven right and customers' excitement for the announcement was deflated soon after. Turns out, C.B. Sobolski's baby is nothing more than a manufactured one-off cash grab. Marvel Comics 1000 commemorates the 80th anniversary of Marvel Comics No. 1, released in 1939. Unfortunately, the series was canceled after only 159 issues in 1959. And even if the series continued the past 60 years, it still wouldn't be close to reaching issue 1000 now. Customers have been expressing frustration at Marvel Comics for far-left ideological content, constant series reboots, and an endless string of events for years. Now, Marvel Comics' genius leadership team are falsely manufacturing an issue 1000 they never earned to bilk readers and retailers out of even more money. The 80-page issue features one page corresponding to each year of Marvel's history. Each page features a different creative team, Al Ewing manages the project, which centers on a new MacGuffin called the Eternity Mask. This is by far the most complex and complicated and difficult book I've ever had to assemble, said Tom Brevoort, Marvel's executive editor and senior vice president of publishing. The teams include a who's who of creators past and present. Steve Rude, Donnie Cates, Jeff Loeb, Tim Sale, Brad Meltzer, Alex Ross, Walt Simonson, Roy Thomas, and George Perez are amongst the star-studded lineup contributing to Marvel Comics 1000. Not every name on the project has experienced success in the industry. Eve Ewing is one of the best new talents at Marvel, but has yet to find her creative voice, let alone contribute to a hit series. Creative teams also feature NBA Hall of Famer Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, movie producers Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, and rapper Taboo of the Black Eyed Peas. Our characters are mentioned in so many different ways and in so many different mediums, and we always keep track, Marvel Editor-in-Chief C.B. Sobolski said. Now these distinguished individuals are able to contribute back to the comics they grew up on. Marvel Comics legends John Byrne, Todd McFarlane, and Frank Miller are all noticeably absent from the creative teams. Marvel regularly fudges numbers and selectively recounts to reach milestone issues after years of rebooting and renumbering. Marvel Comics isn't even trying to justify the anniversary series title this go-around. More than anything, it was a symbolic thing, explained Tom Brevoort. What it symbolizes truly depends on the receiver. I'm stuck between absolute desperation and sheer stupidity. The 1000 numbering is a clear response to DC Comics' recent success with their milestone issues. DC Comics Action Comics reached the 1000 issue landmark in April 2018. Their Detective Comics series reached the milestone soon after in March 2019. Both commemorative issues released as 80-page giants featuring DC Comics' most respected writers and artists both current and past. Both issues were widely anticipated and enormous financial successes for Marvel's rival. Green with Envy, Marvel is attempting to cash in on the 1000 issue breakthrough without coming close to actually achieving it themselves. Reactions from scores of readers, writers, and artists to the announcement include everything from contempt, mocking, and shade. Marvel's use of the symbolic, aka empty, number 1000 struck the largest nerve. 
bear criticism as both DC comic series printed 1,000 issues each before reaching the landmark number. Current Batman scribe Tom King even tweeted that DC retitled his upcoming Mr. Miracle hardcover to Dark Side is number 1,000. There was genuine anticipation in the comic book community in response to Marvel's teaser images. Reader excitement was fervent across the board for 48 hours before the Marvel 1000 announcement. Customer hope for Marvel's return to its former glory was real. C.B. Sobolski, Tom Brevoort, and Marvel Comics once again squandered a chance to make amends and bring back part of their lost customer base. Instead, they're going for the easy buck by making up an accomplishment out of jealousy and greed. How many more times will customers allow their hopes to rise before having the rug pulled out once again? Marvel Comics is walking a fine line. Customers and retailers are fed up. The amount of time they have to turn things around can likely be counted in months. If Marvel doesn't move on from CB and his abhorrent leadership and clean house soon, the industry as we know it might be beyond saving. One need look no further than April 2019 sales numbers. On the surface, sales numbers look great for Marvel. Powered by four issue number ones in the top 10, Marvel moved over 50% of all comics shipped and held 45% of the dollar market share in April 2019. War of the Realms number one was the top issue ship followed by Symbiote Spider-Man number one at the number two spot. Marvel also landed Immortal Hulk number 16, Thanos number one, Web of Venom, Cult of Carnage No. 1, and Amazing Spider-Man No. 20 in the top 10. DC Comics landed four issues in the top 10, led by The Batman Who Laughs No. 4 at the number 3 position. If you dig a bit deeper, things look much worse for Marvel and the comic book industry in general. War of the Realms is Marvel's big line-wide event and is tied to several ordering schemes to prop up sales. Thanos, released in conjunction with Avengers Endgame, which appears well on its way to shattering the all-time global box office record. Cult of Carnage is a precursor to Marvel's highly anticipated Absolute Carnage event. These issues were all priced above the industry standard $3.99. Despite all these factors in Marvel's favor and a 50% market share, dollars sold are down 11% compared to March 2019. Comic book dollar sales dropped a whopping 14.6% in comparison to April 2018. Overall, comic book and graphic novel dollar sales in April were down 17.65% compared to April 2018, though down a slightly lesser 15.24% in total units shipped. Thanks to the overwhelming success of last month's Detective Comics 1000, comic book and graphic novel dollar sales are up 0.41% through the first four months of 2019, but down 5.4% in units shipped. Marvel has some legit hits on their hands with Amazing Spider-Man, Venom, and Immortal Hulk, but they desperately need more titles that can move sales past issue one. Marvel's recently announced Black Cat series has enough early buzz that it might be its next certified hit. Felicia Hardy finally gets her first solo series following the Amazing Spider-Man's hunted story arc. Black Cat features writer Jed McKay and art by Mike Dowling, Travel Foreman, and now Fuji. But it's J. Scott Campbell's beautiful vintage cover that's creating the most buzz for the series. Black Cat number one is scheduled to arrive in stores on 5 June. With the recent cutbacks at DC Comics, talented writers and artists are sure to be hitting the free agent market. Marvel Comics signed artist Patrick Gleason to an exclusive deal. They announced the agreement at Fan Expo Dallas. Gleason has long been associated with DC Comics and was a key contributor to the revival of Superman during DC Rebirth. Superman was rebooted to coincide with Action Comics number 1000 and the arrival of Marvel outcast Brian Michael Bendis. Superman sales are steadily declining due to his new creative direction for Big Blue. Gleason's recent DC work includes illustrating the Young Justice relaunch. Bendis is also currently destroying the Young Justice series. Gleason's first Marvel work arrives in a short story in July's Amazing Spider-Man 25. Finally, Marvel canceled their upcoming Marvel Summer Special No. 1 after soliciting the book. The one-shot was meant to play homage to Marvel's swimsuit issues of the 90s that parodied Sports Illustrated's annual best-selling magazine. Thankfully, someone at Marvel had enough sense to inform Sobolski and Brevoort swimsuit issues aren't really a thing in 2019. 
and the only readers to get the gag would be in their 40s and up. The issue was scheduled to feature 40 pages and a $4.99 price tag. No word on the status of Marvel's other woefully out-of-date homages to Stay by the Bell, computer game Trailblazer, The Oregon Trail, and Sobolski favorite TV dinners. Recent community buzz surrounding Marvel Comics is dominated by Marvel Comics 1000. C.B. Sobolski and Marvel Comics are extremely desperate, woefully equipped to read their own customer base, or most likely equal parts of both. The announcement galvanized an increasingly divided comic book community in mockery and open scorn. Marvel Comics continues to struggle to find real estate in the top 10 comics shipped outside of Spider-Man, Immortal Hulk, and number one issues. Relief may be in sight, buzz surrounding the upcoming Black Cat series is very high. Artist Patrick Gleason is also highly regarded and if placed on the right series could have positive impact on future sales. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.